Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome you all to the next lecture on inorganic chemistry of life, uh, principles and perspectives. In the previous class, I have built all the necessary components required to understand uh, uh, ion transport in uh, ion pumps like sodium potassium, ATPases, etc. Uh, using uh, the, the synthetic molecules as well as the molecules of the natural uh, so source. Now, let us uh, go into the uh, case of the ATPase. We will uh, study mo in more detail one of the ATPases that is sodium potassium ATPase. Let us look at this particular slide. So, one of the most uh, uh, studied active transport system is the sodium potassium plus what it does basically is it pumps 3 sodium ions out of the cell and 2 potassium ions into the cell. We have already seen the concentrations of the cellular concentrations in all of these. Okay. And this is an energy based process. So, this is an energy based process. So, it will hydrolyze the ATP. In fact, in the body, the most of this uh, uh, energy is consumed uh, mainly for the uh, ATP pump activities uh, of this sodium potassium or calcium, uh, 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 magnesium or calcium proton, these kind of a things. Uh, this protein has uh, uh, several subunit. You can see the protein looks like somewhat like this. A lot of helical, alpha helical structures you have, and you also have some beta sheet structures here too. And uh, uh, it's a quite quite long, uh, a cylindrical kind of a, a protein because the such kind of a cylindrical kind of a protein will have a very nice preference to build itself into or to push itself into the membrane. You can see that. So the 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 alpha subunits. Uh, here and the beta subunits here. So, that is how it is. So, you are getting into this one, this subunit here, this one and this one. So, you get more or less this particular uh, membrane is uh, completely filled by that and these small uh, things that are shown over there are nothing but the glycosylated uh, uh, portions here. So, that comes as the proteins uh, glycos glycosylation post uh, translational one, you do not need to worry about it. So, otherwise you take it as granted this whole protein if you try to insert it and you can see in this form. So, you have the beta kind of thing is the alpha subunit and beta subunit nothing to do with the alpha helical and beta sheet no. So, it is this is what is inserted into this. Once you have this the sodium ions uh, you know going pumping out of it and potassium ions pumping in and the ATP is uh, uh, utilized. And whatever I said in this point uh, here, uh, this has been shown over there. So, this point and this particular depiction are one and the same you can expect. And this particular structure which I have shown here is inserted into this. So, you can understand. So, this protein gets into the membrane and then functions. So, because it has to take ions from outside and bring inside, it has to take ions from inside and take it outside and which is shown over there. So, it takes ion from inside and takes it out, it takes ions from outside and uh, drops it inside. And uh, uh, how does it uh, do? In a, let us look at it in a very gross uh, manner and let us assume this is the, this is the protein and uh, this is the membrane you have and you can easily see and these are some sites for binding these are some additional sites. So, so initially the protein uh, the ATPase protein which is uh, which is let us say APO will pick up 3 sodium ions. These 3 are shown over there and 3 sodium ions uh, are now should be transported out. They are taken from inside and it is bound. At this stage the ATP goes to ADP means it loses one uh, phosphate and that phosphate is added to this particular protein. So, this is particular protein. So, that means the protein is phosphorylated. When the protein is phosphorylated, its conformation absolutely changes and that is what is shown like a uh, V uh, inverted V and showed 
one more inversion will make into u or b kind of a shape. So, because this is a phosphorylation, once it is phosphorylated, the protein conformation change, then when the protein conformation changes, the sodium ion affinity to the pump is reduced. So, therefore, sodium is released because the affinity is reduced. And at this stage, there are uh, unfilled sites which are picked up by the potassium. The potassium affinity to these sites will increase. Now, there is the, the protein which is phosphorylated undergoes a dephosphorylation. Okay. So, you have a step of phosphorylation, step of dephosphorylation. When it dephosphorylates, then it loses the affinity for the potassium and the potassium comes. So, so one inside, one outside, so into the cell and then now the free ATP is, is ready for the next cycle and that is what is shown over here. So, the transporter binds to 3 sodium ions from the cytosol and then there is a phosphorylation by ATP and then uh, the sodium plus is released because sodium plus affinity is decreased and then that is goes into the dephosphorylation step and dephosphorylation stage. Uh, of course, at this stage the potassium is bound and the potassium comes out. The same thing is shown over here steps as 1, step 2, step 3, step 4, step 5 kind of thing. So, now you understand the protein has different sites for sodium binding, potassium binding. Their affinities vary depending upon the protein conformation and in this critical conformation it has an affinity for sodium ions. In this conformation it has an affinity for uh, potassium ions. The conformation change can be obtained by the phosphorylation and can return back by dephosphorylation. This is the thing that we need to understand this. The same thing is explained in a little different way here. We have uh, the E 1 is a one of the one of the conformational state of the protein and uh, of course, the ATP bind then the, it is active and at that stage the sodium ions are taken in. Okay. So, the sodium bind binding takes in place and so therefore, you have a E 1 ATP sodium. At this stage the magnesium ions will activate the ATP and then uh, may convert into ADP and attach that uh, one of the phosphate group to the protein. So, that is the uh, one where it adds the protein. So, when it adds the phosphate group is added to the protein, the protein conformation is obviously changed from E 1 to E 2 and at that stage the sodium plus has no affinity, sodium plus is released out. So, you can see what is happening outside uh, here and what is happening inside here kind of thing. Now, at this stage the dephos uh, potassium ions can bind because the protein has a different conformational state which is E 2 conformational state. At this stage it has an affinity for potassium ions and the potassium ions will bind and once the potassium ions bind it will trigger uh, with the, the dephosphorylation and uh, the, when the dephosphorylation takes place the affinity for potassium is, is reduced and this protein is carried over here or this complex is carried over here and in presence of the magnesium uh, it will be uh, the dephosphorylation takes taking place and that will result back to the original complex. Okay. So, we have affinity for sodium affinity for potassium here. So, affinity for sodium and affinity for potassium and this E 1 conformation to E 2 conformation. So, E 1 before uh, phosphorylation E 2 after phosphorylation after dephosphorylation again it will go back to E 1 and this is the kind of a cycle that occurs for the sodium potassium ATP uh, in these uh, systems. So, I, I hope you understand that one. Now, we talked about in the previous uh, two cases, we talked about the 3 ions of sodium and uh, sodium binding and then 3 ions of the sodium released, 2 ions of potassium binding, 2 ions of the potassium released. These are the aspects that we have looked at already earlier uh, in that. So, the same thing through conformational state. So, the previous picture in the previous slide it is demonstrates the ion binding property. In this slide we uh, demonstrate the conformational state of this. So, one E 1 conformation and after phosphorylation it becomes E 2 conformation then dephosphorylation will come back to the E 1 conformation. So, the two things uh, are coupled together it is not that these two things happen at two different stages they all happen together. Now, let us look at one little uh, more uh, information in this context 
which explains the uh, uh, sodium uh, transport or sodium uh, movement, sodium ions movement in this. You see that. So, one of the, 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 the protein part inside the uh, inside this uh, membrane you have the two uh, alpha helices coming closer you can see that the, they have the, the sides of the binding and another side of the binding and this. So, therefore, as the, the uh, conformational chain uh, initiates the one of these ion uh, over here will uh, drop down here the ion which is present over here will drop down here in the presence of the water because the water will de uh, chelate from here from this and then make it. So, you have a smooth flow of ions going from one center to the other to the other into the bulk uh, into the uh, in uh, uh, releases uh, uh, the ion is being released you see that. So, finally, you have a release of the ions. Okay. So, you are taking from inside and then you are making it to the outside this is what is basically demonstrated. So, you can see the region, the region is uh, connected by the sodium ions uh, in the peptide uh, protein region and to the next site and he, at this stage the water interaction will lead to the uh, replacement of the. So, similarly the next conformational change will lead to the release of all these one by one. So, the third one will come first, the second uh, site one will come next, the first site one, uh, uh, ion will come uh, uh, next. So, this is how the sodium ion uh, flow and the same thing can be seen from here the flow as it goes here when the conformational state is changed then there is a uh, opening up of this and then it will drop down. Okay. So, at one conformation the three are intact when the phosphorylation takes place the conformation changes as the conformational state changes the, uh, the ion the first will go to the second, second will go to the third, third will come out into the uh, in, in it is released uh, into the cell. So, where the water is present here. So, in other words it will be into the cytosol. So, I hope with this you understand the sodium potassium ATPs pump. Similarly, uh, you can also look at the calcium uh, ATPase pump and the calcium ATPase pump is coupled with the protons. So, calcium is 2 plus, so you proton is 1 plus, so you, so you can understand each calcium ion is coupled with 2 protons and you should also understand when this kind of a uh, coupling takes place then you need to understand that there is a pH variation and that is what I explained in the earlier slides too. Just like the sodium potassium uh, pump for the calcium ATPase pump and uh, let us say original uh, conformation is E1 in presence of the, uh, uh, the ATP the calcium binding, the calcium binding will release the two of the uh, protons and uh, at this stage the ATP activates. So, you have a ATP complex of the E1 and this ATP complex of the E1 is activated to convert to the ADP which means this is ATP is hydrolyzed okay, and the ADP goes out and the phosphate part is added to the protein. So, that is what is called the uh, protein phosphorylation. So, E 1 P will convert to N E 2 kind of a structure and during this that it has an ability to uh, uh, release the uh, uh, calcium ions because in presence of the uh, uh, H plus ions. So, in presence of the H plus ions then this will release that one. So, now the protein has a different uh, the conformation and at this uh, conformation again now it loses the phosphate. So, dephosphorylation and goes back to the uh, original state of uh, the conformation. So, it is very analogous to what happens in case of the sodium potassium ATPase is uh, for the calcium proton uh, pump. So, in other words calcium ATP will go in the similar kind of a uh, uh, type of transport. Now, you understand the major things that happens in this is uh, either the sodium or potassium. Let us take the sodium 
uh, so, sorry sodium potassium ATPase that the uh, initial conformation of the ATPase has an affinity to bind to the sodiums. The sodiums are taken in all the three sodiums are taken in then uh, the ATP activates this and then ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP and that will result in a phosphorylation of the protein and the phosphorylation of the protein will uh, uh, change the conformation and the conformational change will release the uh, will release the sodiums and at that stage the, the conformational state is suitable for the potassium to bind and, and this is in a different conformational state. And, and at this stage once the potassium is bound then the dephosphorylation takes place and the dephosphorylation takes place potassiums come out too. So, it is the same kind of thing between the uh, so, uh, calcium and uh, protons as well. Now, we will look at a little bit more on the uh, one more protein or one more enzyme of a calcium containing enzyme. So, this enzyme is a staphylococcal nuclease and this is a calcium. Calcium is at the uh, active site or catalytic site. Now, if you can look at that the calcium is bound to the protein uh, in this, these are all coming from the protein and then what does it do? It does hydrolyze the sugar bond connected with the ribose. So, it will separate the ribose versus this one. So, that is the nuclease activity of this. So, this is the main uh, binding core for the calcium as you can see where the substrate is also of course, bound in this. So, binding site of the nuclease of the calcium complex. Uh, let us look at uh, the kind of things that happen in this. What is basically it does? So, it is a, a phosphate and sugar bonding I, I am sure you are aware in the nucleotides. So, it is that particular bonding which gets hydrolyzed. Okay. So, separate the phosphate and separate the uh, sugar part of it. So, that is what is happening. So, you have seen in the previous uh, slide uh, that you can see that uh, this is the uh, nucleotide part which is attached over here and this is very clearly can be seen the region of interest. So, the region of interest this is your calcium and this is the phosphate and this is the phosphate with the uh, sugar connectivity and it is this one which gets hydrolyzed. So, to get hydrolyzed, so you have a kind of an attack on this and this nucleophilic attack comes from a water molecule which in turn is activated by a glutamate residue. So, glutamate residue in the vicinity of the reaction center will activate a water molecule and then make this water molecule into OH minus and that is uh, brings in a, uh, a nucleophilic attack. And as a result of this as, as you can see this uh, this transforms into this. In this thing as you can see 1, 2, 3 trigonal one on the top one on the bottom. So, you get trigonal bipyramidal intermediate stage and here the phosphorus is in the tetrahedral uh, state and here trigonal bipyramidal state and this is an essential kind of a transition state to which uh, this particular reaction goes through. Once it goes uh, the, the attack of uh, the uh, water as a hydroxyl which is activated by this glutamate. And it is not only this just this role of the glutamate is important, role of this arginine is important, arginine 35 and the role of the arginine 87. So, role of arginine 80, 35, arginine 87 are equally important in the whole process of reaction converting into transition state and converting into product all three uh, stages of this. But however, glutamate 43 has a specific role in activating the water. So, the initiation of the nucleophilic attack is uh, basically uh, carried out basically carried out by this particular water which is assisted by glutamate 43. And whereas, the phosphonucleotide uh, is stabilized by the arginine 35 on this side and arginine 87 on this side and additionally as you can see that there is a 
uh, NH2 group because the originin which is essential when you break this PO bond you need to stabilize this bond by uh, uh, this O minus by a protonation and that is what is you can see the O, o is a so this is O O that becomes OH CH2 R prime. So, this is the ribosyl part or ribose part and this is the phosphate part and the phosphate center gets a OH from this side which is, is a nucleophilic attack on this. So, the entire the, uh, uh, the phosphate binding is not only stabilized by the calcium center, but also stabilized by arginine 35, arginine 87. So, therefore, at the reaction center these act like a secondary coordination sphere and there is an importance. So, many times we think that the metalloenzyme means the substrate will directly bind to the metal center nothing else is required which is not true. In some cases of course, the metal center is required here and what is required is a secondary interactions uh, or secondary sphere interactions. The secondary sphere interactions means interactions coming from the protein in this case originin 35, originin 87 which will ensure that this nucleotide is perfectly placed over this. So, that the water attack can take place at the phosphorus otherwise it will not happen and that leads to the uh, intermediate step which is transition state and the transition state is a penta coordinate the phosphorus and this will further protonate and break to the phosphate in this one. Okay. So, uh, thus we have seen uh, the uh, a clear cut mechanism of uh, uh, an enzyme nuclease which is uh, the activated by calcium 2 plus. You can see that direct reaction is not at the calcium 2 plus, but calcium 2 plus is essential for this to hold this whole situation and the secondary interactions are uh, necessary for the holding the substrate. So, it is a total system which is playing an important role not just the calcium 2 plus alone. So, that is why we, we talk that the in these enzymes they are the metal activated enzymes basically. So, one of the example I have shown very clearly here is the how a, a phosphate uh, uh, the nucleotide hydrolysis takes place uh, to phosphate and sugar to phosphate and sugar going uh, from a, a nucleophilic attack of the water uh, via this particular glutamate. Glutamate is base that will uh, uh, pull out the proton, it will make OH minus, this OH minus will interact or, or make a nucleophilic attack at this and then make uh, the transition state and this at this transition state the, uh, the protonation will lead to the R prime CH 2 OH and this. So, that means, you need an alignment of the phosphate moiety with respect to this water and this whole thing is ensured by this group here that group over there origin and the origin over there. So, these are the kinds of activities that uh, uh, particularly takes care in this particular uh, enzyme. So, in effect let me uh, conclude that we have been looking at in the last 3 to 4 classes the role of alkali alkaline earth ions and there when you come to the role of the alkali alkaline earth ions it is the uh, sodium plus potassium plus and it is the calcium 2 plus and magnesium 2 plus. We have looked at their relative concentrations inside the cell, outside the cell, uh, in, uh, intracellular, extracellular. We have tried to understand that most of the enzymes inside the cell are activated by the potassium plus and very few are for the sodium uh, plus and we have seen that the there are large number of variety of enzymes kinases, phosphatases, mutases, uh, synthetases all these kinds of things are activated by uh, potassium plus and we also analyzed several crystal structures known in the literature and we have looked at the uh, potassium plus or sodium plus binding centers and they, the binding could be the 4 coordination, 5 coordination, 6 coordination, 7 coordination, rare cases uh, 8 coordinations too uh, all these we have try to look at and then uh, and then try to compare the relative affinity of these ones. Uh, the calcium 2 plus has a greatest affinity as compared to the magnesium 2 plus greater than that of the potassium plus greater than that of the uh, sodium plus. Uh, this we have tried to understand uh, the affinity of these ones and in the cellular proteins uh, the ion affinity 
to cellular proteins is calcium 2 plus is much much greater than magnesium 2 plus much much greater than uh, potassium plus is much greater than sodium plus. So, and I have also explained to you uh, that in case of uh, the uh, magnesium and calcium concentrations if you compare magnesium concentration is much greater than the calcium, but however magnesium ions do not activate the calcium uh, enzymes because of the selectivity of the calcium towards the carboxyl kind of a groups and this is where the nature has modified certain glutamic residues by adding one more carboxyl group gamma carboxyl group to make into the uh, carboxylate containing uh, uh, proteins and therefore, they become very specific towards the uh, towards the calcium binding. So, calcium versus uh, the magnesium kind of a competition has been taken care by the nature by adding more carboxylic groups. So, more carboxylic groups are, are more uh, favoring uh, the calcium 2 plus as compared to the magnesium 2 plus. Then we have looked at the magnesium 2 plus is involved in a large number of uh, uh, enzyme reactions, kinases, phosphatases, uh, mutases all these kinds of enzymes synthetases all this and particularly a lot is involved in phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. Magnesium 2 plus is involved a lot in the phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. In the next part we have tried to understand the ion uh, binding and ion selectivities. So, we have looked at the uh, crown ethers and we have looked at the cryptans uh, explained through uh, crown ethers. Uh, and cryptins. So, uh, what we uh, have tried to look at is one is uh, core size, uh, core or pore size and uh, two uh, number of ligating centers and we have looked at uh, 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 hydro Felicity or phobicity of the uh, ionophore, which is exposed to the environment. Uh, that will uh, influence uh, the binding strengths of these uh, ions basically because there is a competition between the water and the ligand a water and the ion and these are the kinds of things that and then we have looked at in the, in the next stage we have looked at ion uh, cell binding strengths. So, ion binding uh, strength uh, versus, versus the transport. So, it is uh, neither proportional. Uh, nor uh, not inversely proportional. Uh, this is what we have uh, explained uh, and therefore, we said log k s uh, which is in the range of 4.5 to 6 is the most uh, preferred one rather than the lower the k s log k s is a problem it will break down before it transports higher the uh, higher the uh, the the log k s is it will keep hold it will never release. So, in either case we have a uh, trouble uh, and therefore, these 4.5 to 6 seem to be very and this matches very well with the with the uh, with the natural ionophores. And in the next aspect we have talked about the uh, talked about the uh, uh, AT pages and uh, sodium. Uh, potassium uh, ATP is uh, so you have uh, uh, the initially it binds to three sodium ions initial conformation and then uh, the, uh, at that stage the phosphorylation is triggered and when it is phosphorylated it loses its affinity and loses the three sodium ions and at this stage it is the potassium ion centers can be activated or are bound 
and then uh, and then in presence of the, uh, the the magnesium again the dephosphorylation takes place and the dephosphorylated one releases the potassium ions and this whole thing will uh, be uh, cyclic kind of thing so therefore sodium potassium ATP so this has the maximum amount of ATP consumed for this kind of thing the last example i have shown was the for the nuclease where the nuclease you break the bond between the phosphorus and the sugar bond uh, is being broken. So, therefore, sugar is separated from the phosphate where the nucleophilic attack. Nucleophilic attack is not directly from calcium center from a water which is activated by glutamate and the whole system is, is configured to be oriented by uh, other arginines present in the near vicinity and going via 5 coordinated uh, transition state and leading to the breakage of this to the uh, sugar and the phosphate part of it. And uh, uh, in the next class, we will start with the uh, transition metal based catalysis. Thank you very much.